going on YouTube? So today we're going to be talking about the Roborock S4 robot vacuum. So I've done a lot of research on robot vacuums. I did purchase one about Christmas time and it didn't come with the laser navigation function, which this thing has for the mapping software. Uh, so basically it just hits the walls and bounces off items throughout the house and doesn't really have a very good navigation system. Uh, so, and it's not very efficient. So this actually maps out your room or multiple rooms for that matter. And it can tell where there are items in the room to avoid, as well as it can tell where it needs to go. And instead of just running down the road or running down the carpet and then bouncing off an item and picking a random location to go next and then bouncing off an item and picking up another random, uh, random location to go to, this will actually vacuum just like you would mow your lawn. Uh, it goes, it goes down and then it turns around goes back up and it overlaps. So it gets a better vacuum seal or vacuum cleanup. And one other thing that I really, really like about this is on the mapping software on your phone, you can actually use it to map out no go zones, specific rooms. You can even tell it to, uh, say do the living room one day, do the kitchen another day, do an office the other day or you can do like one in the morning and the one in the evening type situation. Uh, so that's really nice. And being that I have a kid and she's got a bunch of toys in her living room, it's, it's hard to keep that all straight and cleaned up. And so when you have a robot vacuum, you want that to be automated. Uh, and for it to be automated, you have to pick up all the toys or whatever's out for it to work right. Now with this, it actually has intelligent software and um, it will actually avoid those type of items as well as add it to the map. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and check, I'm gonna unbox this and check what's in the box. And I also wanna show you some of the features on the actual iPhone app that does have an Android app as well for you. But I wanna show you some features on there and then show you uh, while it's actually working and doing its job. So let's go ahead and open the box and see what you get in the box. Before we do that, I wanted to say this is about 350 bucks. You're gonna spend about mid 300s to $500 on a robot vacuum that has laser navigation uh, versus the ones that I call, I call dummy robots because in all reality, uh, the robot just hits off things and randomly goes the next direction and just does that until it decides it's done. So now let's go ahead and check and see what you get in the box. This is actually 350 bucks. I'll throw a link in the description below. Um, to actually today I just checked and it's $319. Uh, I know it's a limited deal. I did buy this for $319 and I've had it for probably about a month now. So the deal came back. So you might get it for $319. Uh, $350 bucks is still a great deal for this. And let's go ahead and check and see what's in the box now. All right, for starters, you get a power plug here. So it looks like a regular power plug you'd have for a TV or a entertainment system. You get probably a replacement filter. I'm sure it already has a filter in there, so this looks like a replacement filter. You need an app connect to network guide, so it tells you kind of how to connect your uh, iPhone or Android device to the actual unit itself. So you get a little brush with a little knife here. So this is to kind of brush out the rollers and also the filter, maybe to clean it out. That way you can get all the pet hair and any other human hair out of there, so that way you can continue to vacuum and have it be more efficient. Here's the user manual. So this will tell you how to use the actual device itself. Uh, I never read these unless I get really frustrated on trying to figure out something and YouTube doesn't show me how to do it. But here's the user manual that you should probably read. And here is the actual Roborock vacuum. So as you can see, it looks like this is the navigation laser. So it's a 360 laser. You got a power button up on the top here and a home button. And then you also have the bumpers up here. So it can, when it hits the items, it can bounce back and go somewhere else. And then you've got, uh, looks like little vents on the backside and a charging port here. One thing I like about the charging port here is this looks like it's easier to back itself up or actually connect it yourself if you wanted to, if it dies in the middle of its um, vacuuming. As a matter of fact, it won't, it shouldn't die in the middle of its vacuuming. It should actually tell how much of life it's got left. And then if it's not gonna be able to make it through the rest of the vacuuming, it's gonna go back to the station and charge and then go back to where it was and then finish. But either way, this is a different design that I've seen versus most of the time the contacts are on the bottom. So on the bottom, you have one arm here. Uh, that's a little bit different because most of the vacuums actually have two arms, one on each side. And then you got the wheels here, the nice rubber wheels here. And then you also have the brush. So this brush looks like it's got a little give to it as well. So you can actually uh, pick up items through like small or medium pile carpet. 
and then also it'll bounce back when it needs to go through hardwood floor and stuff like that. So then you got a little wheel here so that it can actually turn around if it needs to or figure out where it needs to go. Then you have the filter in here you see right here. So it's already got a filter in here. And it, so that filter we had before is a spare filter. And then this is the bin that all the debris and all that it vacuums up goes into. Uh, one thing about this unit is it doesn't go to a station and empty its bin. So you need to make sure you're watching that. Uh, so if it vacuums for a day or whatever, you need to make sure you check this and empty it out as needed. So here is the actual base station where it charges. Um, it's pretty basic actually. Uh, it looks like you got a little area here so you can wrap up the actual power cord so if you don't need it all out. Then you have the two metal charging plates right here so it backs itself up into. One thing I like about this charging plate is the other robot vacuums I've had, it's the bottom part is longer and so it kind of sticks out in, in the area. So if you have this, somewhere kind of like against the wall or whatever it kind of sticks out and when the actual vacuum is not there it's kind of in the way right but either way this is a nice design uh, this looks like it has maybe some sensors behind it so that way the vacuum knows it triggers the vacuum to tell it where it actually is so it can come back home all right so there are a few things on this that i want to discuss that i'm sure that you want to know and also they're very important i feel like that that goes in hand in hand on what makes this really nice um, it does have the actual high precision laser navigation system. It does scan your room about 300 RPMs. So it creates a real time map of your room that is accurate up to plus or minus two centimeters. So it's very, very precise. Um, it does have app control, like I said, on your iPhone or your Android device. And you can select cleaning rooms, no go zones, uh, power settings, map saving. You can save different maps. Uh, it gives you total control over your S4. Uh, Robo Rock. So what's nice about this is it has 2000 PA suction power. Um, it's the same, I believe, for the S5 and the S6, which are the higher models than this is. And the thing that this thing's lacking is the mopping por portion of it. The S4, I'm sorry, the S5, the S6 have the mopping function. This does not. My understanding is the processor that's on this is either very similar or the same as the S6. I can't remember which one it is, but it's very close. Um, but the 2000 PA suction power is enough to lift a double A battery from the ground. Um, so that that's pretty crazy to me. It does have a supersized 5,200 milliamps uh, battery for you. So that lasts up to 150 minutes of nonstop cleaning. So 150 minutes, that's almost three hours of actually nonstop cleaning, which is that's, that's insane to me. Um, I'm sure there are other models out there that have similar or if not, maybe longer. But at three, almost three hours of cleaning, I mean, I, it should be able to clean most of my uh, main floor um, with, without uh, having to go back and charge. And my main floor is probably about a thousand square feet, maybe a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this set up to my iPhone app and then get it charged as well. So we can actually get it on the carpet in my living room and show you what it does and how it works and how the actual app looks and kind of show you a little bit more about the app itself. Um, my, like I said, my living room has kids toys all around it and we'll be able to show no go zones where we actually keep a lot of the larger toys. So we'll go ahead and check that out. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So if you can see here, I've already done a no go zone here, with all these toys right here. So this is kind of like on this area right here is all my daughter's toys. And so I just went ahead and put a no go zone. So that way we can just put the toys to the right and we're good to go there. As you can see, it is down there and, uh, We'll go ahead and hit clean here. And so what I've seen here is it's, it's mapping it out. And so right now it's kind of over there in the corner, running into things, kind of figuring things out as it goes and building the map as it goes. Um, once it builds the map and knows where things are, uh, I'm told it's more efficient. So and it'll actually start cleaning uh, with the stripes up and down. Oops. So it looks like the side brush is jammed. So it gives me an error and I go ahead and clean that out, make sure that's working. But as you can see here, here's the couch. So it knows the couch is right there and it knows something was right there. So that's probably that bag over there, as you can see over there. And then over here is another couch. And then over here is actually the wall. It's over here on the side. Uh, I did into no goods on here because this is the end of uh, the living room itself. I haven't really figured that out yet. If it can tell where the room ends and where it doesn't. Um, but it's mapping out the room right now. So it does take a little bit of time to map the room out the first time. Um, I will say that it has a timer, it has an area, uh, and then also it tells you the battery percentage here.
All right, you can tell now that it's actually trying to make its path. It is caught up over there on the end over there for some reason. I don't know why, but you can tell that it's actually making its path now. It's actually finding out where it needs to go, uh, finding out where it's already been, and, uh, and it's starting to actually vacuum the carpet itself. I'm not really sure what it's doing over here. It should be going back and forth and cleaning right here, but for some reason it's, it's all stuck up right in this little area right here. I don't know if it's like detecting more dirt or something, I don't know. But it feels like it's stuck up there. Here it goes, it should come back closer to me. I'm assuming it just takes a little bit of time to actually get going and get the, everything mapped out and ready to go. There it goes. Now remember I do have this area right here on a no zone, an invisible wall style. So that way it doesn't go there and get all sucking up the baby dolls and stuff. See, now it's going right again. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, there we go. I think it's confused just a little bit. There it goes. I'm not sure why it did that. So as you can see, here's the actual iPhone app. We did kind of go over that a little bit. So here's the room it mapped out. It did find all this stuff down here. And this is actually my uh, kitchen right here on this area. And this is my living room. So here's the couch I have right there. And then the couch right there. And then there's some items over here that I told it not to, I mean, it couldn't really go to because there's not enough room for it to go. Got the fireplace right there. Um, remember I had the little uh, uh, the bag that has, or not towels, but uh, blankets and stuff like that in it. It was right there, so I picked it out. Here's a no-go zone with all my kids' toys. And so, as you can see, it started going back and forth and overlapping itself. And so that way, it was uh, it actually was done within, well, it got, doesn't have this part yet, but it was done within 15 minutes, which actually is pretty nice. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be done quicker than that because it knows exactly now where to go. But a little bit about the app itself. Um, so, uh, I gotta end that and name the actual room itself. But you can go through the rooms. Um, you can do zones, you can do all, it's up to you. Um, under map or app management, I can go do a no-go zone. So I click that and actually invisible wall if I wanted to, or I can do like a square or a rectangle or whatever to kind of block out something. So if I have something in the middle that I don't want it to suck up, or if there's, I don't know why you'd do that, but if you had something for whatever reason, you can do a box or you can even do a no-go zone. So I can literally could have done a no-go zone right here and put a line. Actually, let's do that right now. So put a line here and done. So now I have a no-go zone and then I have a right, no-go zone and then an invisible wall. And so this can be saved as my, it's up to map. It can be saved as my living room. So right now, I can actually, since it's not docked, I can hit dock and I go find the dock itself. I'm not gonna do that because it's on the table. But uh, I can hit clean and it'll go ahead and clean this room. And then it has the statistics up here. Um, how much battery life's left, uh, how much time is left, or actually how much time it took. All right, so up here is the three dots. It gives you quite a few settings. So you have vacuum settings, you can go here. And it's got map saving, right now it's a beta. Uh, you can have the indicator light on the top to have on or off. You can turn on do not disturb times. So one thing about this is it has timers instead of scheduling. So like right now, this is uh, starts at 9.30. It's going to vacuum my living room at, on Monday and Thursday, and I used balance for cleaning mode. So uh, they use what they call timers, not schedules. And so I can set each room. They have a volume, and you can change it to different languages pin and go. So I literally can spot clean or tell where this thing, this uh, actual vacuum, where to go if I wanted to. Um, they have remote control, upgrade firmware, cleaning history. So right now it's going to tell me it started on schedule at 727, which was today at 930 AM. I can go into it more and it shows me its cleaning path. So it looks like it got a little stuck right there or something happened right there. So it took 10 uh, or 18 minutes to actually do. 
maintenance. So you can actually, it knows how many hours. So it looks like 150 hours for the filter, 200 hours for the side brush, 300 hours for the main brush, and 30 hours for the, for the sensors itself. So you know when to actually change those out. They actually even have the service or the user manual in here. So you can actually um, look at the user manual without going online or looking at it from the paper one. And then find my robot. You can actually go and find my robot if you wanted to. Um, that way if you can't find it, it, it'll make a noise. So they do have multiple different uh, cleaning modes. They have a silent mode, balanced, turbo, and max. I'm assuming silent is more quiet than everything else. Uh, balance is what I've had it on, so you can you could hear it actually vacuuming. So it wasn't too bad on balanced, but uh, turbo and max would be a little bit louder. Silent, uh, it's probably pretty quiet. So that's pretty much it with the actual uh, Roborock and the app itself. If you have any questions, comments, or opinions, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. Like I said, I'll throw the link of the actual product in the description. And as along with, you know, replacement filters or anything that's replacement parts for it. So that way, if you need any replacement parts, you can check them out there too. If this is your first time to my channel, please consider subscribing. If not, welcome back. Good to have you here. And uh, go ahead and hit the like button if you like the video. And I will see you next time.